Harvest Service. We are praying together that as we celebrate the goodness of God in our lives, that as we celebrate what God continues to do for each and every one of us, that God will visit us and He will grant us our heart desires. The Bible tells us that how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. That same psalm concludes by saying, for there the Lord commands his blessings. We are praying together that as we celebrate God's goodness, that God will command his blessings on each and every one of us. You are welcome in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Each and every one of you is welcome to the Brickhour Circuit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. from heaven, 
even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O merciful God, at whose bidding the earth withhold her increase or render it a fruit in her season, give us grace that we may learn both from thy mercies and thy judgments our entire dependence upon you for the supply of our daily bread and grant that we remember it that your blessings are for our trials as well as for our comfort. May with thankfulness and with thankful hearts give unto thee your own, ministering gladly to the maintenance of thy church and the relief of the, of the poor and the afflicted, the widow and the orphans, to the glory of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, we pray thee, sow the seeds of the word in our hearts, and send down upon us the showers of thy grace, that we may bring forth, we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit as the fruit of the earth, and that at the great day of harvest may we be gathered by the holy angels into the heavenly garden through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you that as we come this morning, we ask that you will forgive us for not taking care of the gifts that you have given to us. We say we are sorry and we ask that your mercy will cleanse us. May your almighty son, may your son, after his resurrection and his ascension be with us. May the spirit of Pentecost rest upon each and every one of us that as we gather our earthly harvest, and our fruit, our spiritual harvest, we beseech that you will look down from heaven upon the fields and our hearts, and that our lives will be for your glory. And grant us grace to help each and every one of us through our prayers and our offering, that when the harvest of the earth is ripe and the time of reaping is come, we together with each and every one may rejoice before thee according to the harvest through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who crowned the year with thy goodness and has given us the fruit of the earth in their seasons, give us grateful hearts that we may unfailingly thank thee for all thy loving kindness and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day, give us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. 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 We will now continue to praise God and thank Him through our praise and our worship. We will invite the choir to lead us into a time of praise and worship.
morning, church. I will first get in a second from the book of Psalms. Psalms 121, starting from verse 1 to 6. Psalms 1 to 6. 1 to 6, sorry. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Niger. Those who sow in tears will leap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed to sow, they will return with songs of joy, carrying shells with them. The word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 13. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 13. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion as through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. This is the word of the Lord.
we have gone into Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Mark 4, 26 to 34. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seeds on the ground, night and day, neither he sleeps or gets up. The seeds shook and grow, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first and thin, then the hand and the food cannot in the head. As soon as the grain is ready, he puts the sink to it. He calls the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? Is it like a mustard seed? which is the smallest of all seeds of the earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can pitch it on its shield. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say nothing to them without using parables. But when he was alone with his own disciple, he explained everything. The Gospel of our Lord. I want to thank in a very sincere and profound way. Uh, the only reverend, well not the only, because Olu is here, who calls me uncle. So anytime we meet, he will not say Father Peter, but he will always say uncle and uncle as well if he's here. And I really want to thank him sincerely uh, because when you are given the opportunity to preach the word of God, you must realize that it is something very weighty. Uh, I am now in my early 50s and I'm beginning to realize how profound and how serious preaching the word of God is. The word of God is not mine. I am among the feeble that God has chosen to share his word to the rest of mankind. And I must, every day of my life, think about the serious nature of breaking the word of God to the hearing of God's people. The word is Christ himself. Psalm 119 says that the word of God is lamp for our steps and light for our feet. In fact, the letter to the Hebrews takes it even more further. He talks about a double-edged sword. And you and I know uh, that a double-edged sword is very dangerous. But not in that manner. He says it cuts more finely than a double-edged sword. It goes to where the bone and the marrow meet. And uh, God made everything and the beauty of human beings through his word. If you read the book of Genesis, he says that there be light and there was light. Mankind came last, of course, women come from our side. But at the end of the day, it is the world that fashioned the earth. So Reverend, or my Jarbat, I always call him my Jarbat, I am happy to be here and I see uh, the serious nature of preaching this word today with your community. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will find favor in the sight of God. Uh, I always say to the Catholic priest that the word of God has its own fragrance. You know, uh, the, the, the word of God, we, we use all the faculties of our bodies to, to get the word of God. That's, that's the beauty of the word. Uh, we don't only hear it, we feel it and we smell it. The word of God has its own special smell. It's beautiful. It's a fragrance. You know, if somebody comes here with a different fragrance, you know. You say it doesn't belong here. You know, uh, I was in one uh, aeroplane and there was a problem. The man came with, I don't know what kind of list color he had. And people were worried, what is this man smelling? It was like he was not in the proper place. They wanted to put him down. And in scripture, you remember the parable that Jesus Christ gave that there was someone who was not in that garment. And they wondered how he came in without the proper garment. The word of God has its own 
fragrance. It also has a touch. You remember the woman with the hemorrhage? She was sick for how many years? More than two days. You know? And for what? That is something. She was feeble. She, she got up one day when she heard that Jesus was in that uh, locality. And she pushed and pushed. And she only touched, the Bible says, the fringe of his garment. And the bleeding stopped what? Instantly. She didn't speak with Jesus face to face, but Jesus says, Power has come out of me. But just that touch, we touch the word of God. We need to. And uh, we are his creatures. We touch one another. I like when they sing, touch me one more time, O oh Lord. I need a heal from the master. I think that those are the words. A heal from the Lord. Touch the word of God. Feel it. Smell it. And that's what we are going to ask the Lord to help us. And today, we are looking at Psalm 126. I have promised Reverend not to go beyond 30 minutes, and I will try. Uh, we are looking at Psalm 126, but you need to have a little bit of biblical history. It's important. Why did the psalmist write that psalm? You know that more than, there are 150 of them, more than half uh, were written by King David. He was a very cantankerous man, but at the same time, a very good man. And I look at people like myself, I can't tell the cross, but it's human nature. Sometimes we insult, we do this, this ah, he's the one, and then hey, he's the one, you know? So, but again, we all struggle like people, but be conscious of the presence of God in your life. That is the important thing. It helps you to change when you know that the Lord is present in your life. In your life. So the theme for our harvest, a harvest is a time to come to say thank you to Jesus. Thank him for the air that we breathe. It's not so. You know, mankind sells everything. Uh, we can't sell the air. But if we were able to we package it and we sell it. If you don't have money, it's your business. You know, we packet airtime, they call it. But not this airtime. This one is free. We thank God for the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, and the clothes that we wear. And so often we take these things for granted. We feel like it's normal. It's not normal. The fact that I am here is not normal. It's the Holy Spirit that woke me up. The Holy Spirit that gave me the energy, like he did Pentecost Sunday a few days ago. All that I'm able to do is not by my might. Sometimes we think that we have it all. I have plenty of money, I'm okay, no we are not. I was telling Reverend, the death of our priest have taught me a lot of things. That these are the things that we jockey for, is not necessary. We should seek for the things that are in heaven. By doing good each day of our life, being kind to one another, being generous to one another, help when you can. There's some people who have help. Until sometimes I feel sorry for them. If you belong to the Catholic Church, you see all these harvests we have, it's the same congregation. And you always put something small in an envelope. Is that not gracious? They try to help every time they hear their parish church wants something. That's how we should live. Thank God for everything in your life. I thank God that Reverend has given me the opportunity to be here. If not, I would have been elsewhere. But for me, I take this opportunity profoundly. It's very serious. And I'm giving the word of God, Psalm 126. The background is they were in exile. For how many years? 70 years. That's a lifetime. Some of them got married in Babylon. Some of them built their houses in Babylon. Some of them can't even remember that there's an Israel next door. Babylon is present in either Iran or Iraq. Some of you go to Israel. I go to Israel to accompany the pilgrims every year. But this year we are afraid to go. You all know what is happening. <laughs> they stay too long. Now, if you read the book of Ezra, I want you, when you go home, you have time. Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Ezra 1, 1 to 4. There was a king called Cyrus who ordered a decree and says, These people must go back to their land. Release them. And he ordered the decree, and the people of Israel went back to Israel. That's where they belong. And now the psalmist, I'm sure the psalmist is one of the exile. I have never been to exile, but I know exile is something terrible. I studied many years in Sierra Leone, and then I ended up in Ghana, and I ended up in Rome, but I always had this nostalgia to go back home. When I'm in the airplane, I come to Yunnan Airport and the plane lands. The song that comes to my mind always is, There is no place like home. 
home sweet home. They wanted to go home. The younger generation were beginning to forget the heritage. And what God has done for the people of Israel, they have stayed too long. They started marrying the Babylonians. But the elders still remember that this place is not our place. We must go back to Israel. We must go back to Mount Horeb. Jerusalem is built on that mountain. So when Cyrus said, go back, in fact, it was a shock. Because the kings before him maltreated them. But when Cyrus came, they were so shocked. How did this happen? They said, their mouths were filled with laughter. On their lips, they were songs. They could not believe it. You know, sometimes when great things happen in your life, you say, not me, Lord. You don't even know whether you want to cry or you want to sing. You are so perplexed. You are surprised that the king, all the kings who came for the past 69 years, maltreated them. How come, Lord, this king after 70 years? Sometimes we suffer for one day and we cry. You see, it's too long. There are some people who have suffered more than you. It was hard for the Jews to believe they were returning to Jerusalem. And the Bible says it seemed like a what? A dream. Reverend, they understand one of you. Yes. 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 It seemed like a dream. They, 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 were, they were meditating on the marvels of the Lord. You know, our God is a God of surprises. He comes to you sometimes at your lowest moment. When everybody tells you it's impossible. The Lord changes what is possible to make it possible. That's the beauty of Jesus Christ. When your family says, it is not possible, you can't do this. I have a friend who always said, the father, this thing is too big, we can't do it. And I don't like to hear that word can't. I said, let's try. He said, it's too big, we can't. Now ask those who were told it's impossible. But today, is it not possible? Ask those who are told that you can't make it. Are they not making it? And I like it it's in the continuous tense. They say, we are making it. What I am is a gift of God. What I shall become is my gift to God. And I want to go back to God and say, God, you give me this little thing, just like the parable said, but I have transformed it with your grace and with your help. So returning back to Israel was like a dream. They were full of laughter. How we laughed and how we sang for joy. Then the other nations. This was what, in the 5th century? Uh, there were the Jebusites, you know, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites. They laughed, they said, wow. The other nations said, the Lord did great things for them. Indeed, he did great things for us. How happy we were. Can you imagine? The other nations were happy for Israel. Because Israel went to exile for far too long. And when they returned, the other nations said, Lord, you have done great things for them. That is the attitude it's supposed to be for every Christian. And sometimes we marvel when others are going down. We marvel when others are, they are stuck. But they are in pain. They are in trouble. You know, I like the psalmist. The psalmist that says, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. For those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. And crying is a form of prayer. Sometimes you go to the chapel, you don't have words to cry. And I say to people who tell me, Father, I just went there and my tears rolled down my cheeks. I say, it's a prayer. There is, when you are desperate, it's a prayer. Some people have cry of desperation. Lord, save my family. We are going down. And you have the Holy Spirit to say, oh, Lord, save us. Even the apostles in the boat. Lord, save us. We are going down with us a prayer. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. When your spirit is down, he will lift you up. The Lord doesn't want you to be down. He wants you to stand on your feet. 
So the other nations joined them. They said, how happy. Are you happy when your friend who was in trouble is restored? But sometimes, you know, enmity can grow so deep that people say, ah, let him die. But that should not be our attitude as Christians. Look at the other nations. These are pagan nations. They were happy when Israel returned back to Jerusalem. When our lips, they said there were songs. They sang the praises of the Lord. And the next stanza says, Let us take back to our land just as the rain brings back sea to dry riverbeds. Let those who weep as they sow rejoice. I decided to divide the psalm into two because it's a very short psalm. When you go home, you, you, you read. This is what I did. I divided the psalm into two. First one, it encourages us to marvel at how God has helped you in the past. Don't ever forget where you came from. I know where I came from. My parents were born in Banjul. My parents struggled and we came to the Papua. When my father was buying that land, I think they were laughing at him. They said, I have a place. Everybody is in Banjul. Why are you going to that bush? You know, in the 69, 70, eventually he bought the land. Then we came in 72, 73, and they struggled and struggled. But he left us with something. And he used to say to us, you know how I got this land? He would say, you know, my father speak Creole, Akwe. Okay, he never spoke all of he didn't like he didn't like us to speak all of also. You know, he didn't only the bandits speak all of you know. We should either speak English or Aku. You know, so so he struggled and struggled and always reminded us of how he got that piece of land and the little house he built. I don't know whether he met it in the land. He said, I got this house on the sand in rain. And he repeated it every day. <laughs> uh, if you don't want to stay in my, uh, under my roof, you go. But I got this house on the sand in rain. Meaning, he struggled. But he never forgot the past. And every day he would say, thank God now I have my family where I can put them. I am no longer paying rent, he says. This is the little house that God never forget the deeds of the Lord in your life in the past. And the people of Israel did not forget. We are all from humble beginnings. Yesterday I was in Bangalore for the funeral of uh, Nilum. And as I was driving, I saw the house. Some are still as they were out going on. But I, I, I just look at humble beginnings, how we started here. And most of you now are living in up garages. You have story buildings. This is what the Lord wants. To begin from nothing and become something. To begin from zero and become a hero. It is, that is what human beings will pull you down, but God will lift you up. Amen. That's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants us to progress. And parents love that in their children. They want to see their, they say, I'm accompanying them to see their work, progress. How they progress in life. Never forget what the Lord has done in the past. In fact, the Psalms that came after Psalm 136, they said, by the rivers of Babylon, they were sad and wet. Remembering Zion, the psalmist that came after this one, we are talking about how they sat in Babylon and they cried and how can we see the Lord's, I don't know, the, 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 the line. It's a song. The Lord's? In a street, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Nostalgia. Wanted to go back. My dear congregation, never forget the deeds of the Lord. Never forget the marvels of the Lord. Don't forget where you came from. I remember I came from nothing until God gave me the grace of coordination. It's wonderful. Why is that God didn't choose people who are better than me? He sees something. And you always hear that phrase, he takes the unqualified and he qualifies them. That is the marvels of the Lord. We can never comprehend. It's a mystery. I know there are better people than I am who should be here. But then he takes a vessel that is weak and feeble and says, I will empower you. St. So Paul says, when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. So weakness in the eyes of men is strength in the eyes of God. So that is why nobody should minimize himself. Don't ever minimize yourself. Don't demean yourself. I say that to students, Father of Munuma. The moment you begin with Munuma Max, Munuma you never progress. You know what I want? Say, I will try. Try. There's a poem that I never read, but my father said it every day in the house when I climbed the poem. So in heights of great men rich and kept, we are not attained by sudden flights. But they where their companions slept, we are toiling upwards and downwards in the night. 
So anytime I get up to light the candle to, to study, my twin brother is sleeping. My father will get up and give us this this uh, this point that the heights that great men have reached today didn't happen suddenly. It happened while their friends were sleeping. They were toiling upwards and downwards in the night. You can never climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pocket. You need to get in them, soil them. Ask people who have arrived. I know they will tell you they have not even reached their height, but they are somewhere in life. They will tell you how they, what they went through. I'm not going to call his name. He told me that in Bangalore there was only one street light. In the night they used to run there to study. And sometimes the man, when he's not happy with them, he will put the light off. <laughs> but they all sat under that light in Bangu. And they read. And then he said his neighbor also had one. Whenever there is a quarrel with the neighbors, the two homes, he will also put that light off. But today he has arrived. He was just telling me, Father, of what he went through as a boy. And I said, man, until today when I look at him, I see success. But he, for him, he's like, Father, all those days were strengthening me for today. So when he went through hardship for Israel 70 years, for me it may be one week, two years, three years, God is preparing you for two more. And also preparing so that you can be an inspiration for others. When you speak, they will hear. They will say, ah! With all that, you are successful. That's what the Lord wants us to hear. And then, the second part. The second part of the psalm encourages us to trust God that he will do it again. If he did it for them, for 70 years he took them back, don't you think he will do it again? He will. The Lord will always do it again. In fact, we always say that our God is a God of many, many chances. Some people say, if you have the second one, we call it our God is a God of second chances. But if God has done it for them, He will always do it again. If God delivered you, in, in, in America they say, big time. If God delivers you big time, it can feel like you are in a tree. But I am telling you, He will do it again. Because God is not me. He will continue to shower you with his blood. You will say, God is enough. Is it for me? Pinch me. But God will say, it's for you. I have done it and I will do it again. Sometimes in our conversations we hear when we people do negative things, just like this and I was in a meeting and there was something wrong, really. And he said, if I get the chance again, and it was something negative, he said, if I get the chance again, I will do it again. No. You only do that with good things. If it is bad, don't do it. Don't repeat it. God always does wonderful things for us. So today, as we come before God to render Him our praise and thanksgiving for what He has done for us as a church, for what He has done for us as a family, for what He has done for us as individuals, we cannot but say we are grateful. And the Lord loves grateful hearts. We must come to worship every day with grateful hearts, even if things are not going on well. The husband and wife, uh, once when I was in the Blessed Sacrament, you know, the husband, uh, he troubled the wife. They were in the car coming to Mass, and they troubled her. There's a little fracas, I don't even call it a quarrel. They just had here and there. And then the wife refused to take communion. But the man went because of the quarrel, because his heart was, she was angry. He said, I will never take communion on the, my, uh, <laughs> until my heart is cold. <laughs> When the man went and received communion, after mass, she came behind and said, Father, this is what happened. My husband provoked me, and I decided not to take communion. What do you say? You know, sometimes when they ask you this question, they are in trouble. Because the husband went, he's, he's trying to say to me, you see, this man, he not get it. He should not have taken communion. But I took communion, and I did not take communion. So what should I say? Just like so many questions were asked to Jesus. You remember the woman? They said she was caught in the very act of what? Committing adultery. And they brought the lady before Jesus. And then Jesus, you know what the law says. If a woman is caught in the very act of committing adultery, she should be stoned to death. And the men were bent on stoning the woman to death. Jesus never gave a reply. He just said, well, 
If there is someone here who has never committed sin, be the first to throw a stone at the woman. And then he bent down for writing. Now what did the Bible say? It said beginning with the, the elders. They went one by one. When Jesus lifted his eyes, there is this gaze with this woman right in front of Jesus. And Jesus said to a woman, have anyone condemned you? And the reply of the woman, he says, no. No one has condemned me, sir. And then Jesus said, neither will I. But the reply of Jesus said, go and sin. We are sinners. So that woman is just like to say, go and avoid quiet when coming to us. <laughs> because even in the sacristy, I always tell my people, it is, sacristy is an extension of the church. Sometimes you have a little here and there before service, and it affects you. I walk in reading. I said, whenever you are angry in preparation for your program, don't go on air. The people will know. So what we should be looking at every day is thanksgiving to God. Not the negative things of our life, but the good things that God has done for us. And in conclusion, in conclusion, I want to give you Genesis chapter 21, verses 6. And seven. You know this familiar story. Abraham was childless. But Abraham prayed to God to cut the long story short. Eventually, with Sarah, uh, they got a son. What's the name of the son? You know the meaning of Isaac? What is the meaning of Isaac? Laughter. Laughter. On our lips, they, were, they, they said they laughed as they were. They couldn't believe it. In her own age, Abraham also in, in his old age, God gave them a song called Laughter. In fact, they decided to call the song Isa Ha Ha Ha. Why? Because it, <laughs> there are certain things that the Lord does for you, you cannot but Isa Ha Ha Ha. You must laugh. The same thing with Elizabeth and Zachariah. They laughed. They could not believe it. There are many stories in the Bible that can teach us that the moment that you begin to doubt, that is the moment that the Lord comes into your life. If the Lord has done it for Abraham and Sarah, if the Lord has done it for Job in Job chapter 42, verse 10, if the Lord has done it for Peter in Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, verses 9 to 11, He can do it for you. And He can do it for me. So today, in thanksgiving to God, we want to pray that the Lord will continue to bless us with abundant graces in our lives. And let us also open up to the promptings of the Spirit. Because the Bible says the Spirit grows wherever it wills. And I pray that the Lord will bless this church. He bless my nephew, Reverend Ashcroft. May the Lord always fulfill him in his ministry. May he conquer the territory that the Lord has given him. And may he go beyond the territory. Lord has given me. And I pray for you who have given me this opportunity. I pray that the Lord will bless the work of your hands. You will bless all your labors. And may this day be a day of joy for all of us who are gathered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just thank God for his life and for his ministry both in the Catholic Church and uh, in the wider world because he's involved in media. Let's ask that God will use him in those platforms and God will increase him. Father, we thank you for Father Peter. We thank you for everything that you have done and for the message that has come forth. We pray that Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that Lord will increase in him, O oh God. Lord, whatever he has lost through you in the preaching, O oh God, we pray for the replenishment. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll stand and we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Who was conceived, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
very much.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts of God that you have given to us. We thank you for everything. We are praying, oh God, that as we offer these gifts, we will also offer our lives unto you. We pray that these gifts that we have given to you and our own lives will be used to follow your kingdom in this, your vineyard. We thank you for everything. We pray that you will continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are now presenting our gifts before the altar. And during this time, we will seek the hymn 923. So we'll ask the children to bring in the water, the fruits, and the gifts. And as we do, we will sit and sing 923. We give thee but thy own. Nine to three. Thank you.
our Lord Jesus Christ loves little children. The Bible tells us, he says to the apostles, we are trying to stop them. He says, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And so often Jesus will tell us that if we want to enter into heaven, we must be like little children. Children are natural, they are spontaneous, they are dependent. They depend on their parents. They depend on the commands that their teachers will give them. So Jesus liking that with us, who are much older, but we must always be dependent on God. So Lord, bless these angels, these little ones, these promising ones, who will eventually take up the faith of Christianity in this land. Deepen their young faith, strengthen their young faith, give them foundation in your name, so that when they are solidified in your world, they will be able to stand strong against all the things that will fall against them. May they be formed by your word. Lord, also bless all these proceeds. They are the fruits or the results of sweat and labor. They are the results of time. Lord, bless all those who have brought them here, who toiled and soiled over the months to come out with this. But you remind us in the Psalms that if the Lord does not build the house in vain, do the laborers labor. You have been there with all of these farmers who have found and today brought their harvest before you. May these harvests find favor in the sight of the Lord. May the Lord accept all these harvests. And also in a very special we ask the Lord to bless this water. Your gift of water brings life and freshness to the earth. It also washes away our sins. As you bless these children and these proceeds, bless this water and bless all of us who are gathered here. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please go and let us pray. After every prayer, I will say, Lord of the harvest, and our response will be, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things that you give us. As we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough. For even one proper meal each day, Lord, bless all those who suffer because of greed of others. We pray for the homeless and those who depend on the charity of others. We pray for the work of the church and for all the organizations in the church that provide for those in need. Help us to share the harvest of the world more fairly so everyone can be fair and there will be no one who is starving. Lord of the harvest. Yeah. Yeah. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, who protect, and who prepare our food. We thank you for the shopkeepers, for the transport delivery drivers, for the processors and the farmers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's wage for their hard work, both at home and in other countries. Help us to want to buy local products and fairy trade goods wherever we can so that everyone can walk with dignity and there will be no more poverty. Lord of the harvest. Yeah. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world. We see through us or around us. For the flowers, the trees and the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful 
about how we use your resources so that there will be clean water, clean air, and plenty of wild birds, animals, mammals, and insects to take the ecosystem or have an eco so that the ecosystem can have an ecological balance in every country. Lord of the harvest. We thank you, Almighty God, for all the good in your creation and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land. We are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we give thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we fail to look after your world as we should. Help us to change so that we too will become a new creation, walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayers. At this harvest time, we ask for your blessing on of each and every family and each and every person that is in this church. We pray for our neighbors and for all those who are sick. We pray for those who live, whose lives have been gathered so that they cannot help them. Help us to recognize the interdependence of all of us and the importance of just relation, community, and helping each other to become good stewards of all, continue, all that you continue to give to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of the harvest, yes. Almighty God, you are the source of life and the giver of all that is good. We pray for ourselves. We pray for the life that you have given to us. We are praying that daily our lives will reflect your image. Lord of the harvest, yes. merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. As we gather here today, honor the theme, planting in tears, weeping in joy. Our hearts overflow with gratitude as we reflect on the abundant blessing bestowed upon us from above. On behalf of the cheer person, of the Harvest Committee. I extend our heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you who has contributed to the success of our annual harvest and Thanksgiving service. First and foremost, we give thanks to God Almighty. It is by His grace and strength that we are gathered here today. We also want to offer our deepest gratitude and appreciation to the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church, the Gambia, the most reverend, Bani E.F. Manga, and the Secretary of Conference, Reverend Louis Kong. Even in their, in their absence, we appreciate them for all their support. And of course, we also appreciate our able ministers, Reverend Perry Bass and Reverend Jackson. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming, sir. Your support ha has been instrumental in making this harvest successful. We are incredibly grateful to have Reverend Father Peter Lopez. Can we give him a round of applause? Are you blessed this afternoon? Yes. Then if you are blessed, give him a bigger one. I think he's that better. He is our guest preacher. Sir, your words are truly, they've truly touched our hearts, providing us with the spiritual ingredients that we need to grow. And we also appreciate our loving, caring, superintendent minister. Can we give a round of applause for Reverend J. O. Ashcroft. Reverend Shaka, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for everything, because your leadership has been instrumental in the success 
of this celebration. Please, let us give a round of applause for all our ministers. All our ministers, thank you very much. And also, not forgetting, we give a special recognition to our grand receiver, Sister Aida, our receivers, Sister Patience, and Sister Rose. Our collectors, we appreciate you. Our leaders, thank you. And to all special guests from various churches, from Marquisa, from Trinity, from Wesley, from Bethel, Bacau, all churches in the Methodist, within the Methodist Church, and those from other churches. We appreciate you because your presence here today definitely added extra flavor in our celebration, and we are truly grateful. We also extend our heartfelt gratitude to all members of Buikama Circuit. That is all five societies. Buikama Society, Kasakunda Society, Nyonfeda Society, Makumbai Society, and Janaba Society. And not forgetting our wonderful, beautiful choir. Can I appreciate them? I think they did extremely wonderful today. We appreciate you. Thank you for a great time to practice, because it's not easy, in order to prepare effectively for this celebration. Your support and participation has definitely made this event a true reflection of unity and teamwork. Together, we have embraced the theme of weeping or planting in tears and weeping in joy. And we pray, and it is my humble prayer, that collectively we will live in joy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That is a prayer. Can we shout a bigger amen? We will live amen. in joy. Amen. And we are all seated here today because, because of a special thing. So I give my deepest gratitude to the wonderful members of the Harvest Committee. Can we please appreciate them? They are not only here, most of them are over there. Okay, they are there to get putting things in place. Okay, so we appreciate them from the planning stage, late meetings. Friday we are here up to 9 p.m. Yesterday up to 10 p.m. we are here just putting things in place. It is not easy. So your hard work and commitment, definitely we can see the result. In closing, let us all remember that our harvest is not just about fruits, but we are also giving out ourselves to the Lord. So our labor, our love, and our faith, we should be steadfast in God's name. May the spirit of thanksgiving that fills our heart today continue to guide us even in days to come, reminding us of the boundless grace and mercies of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you very much and may the Lord bless you. Good afternoon, church. Yesterday, I was at Sifo Methodist Church to represent the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church, the Gambia, for a uh, groundbreaking of Methodist Church in Sifo. And that church will house about three, uh, 400 to 500 members. So it is going to be a big church and it's not the headquarters of a circuit. And today we are here at Brikama Circuit, the headquarters, and we are in this church at this place. It is also my home circuit, and sometimes when I pass here, I'm not always happy because the circuit headquarters should be better than this, it should be bigger than this. If in my hometown, my home village is also town, my town also is town, it's town, yeah. My, my Kasabuda village is a town. My, <laughs> my village is a town. It's even bigger than this church. So I understand that the aim of the superintendent minister and the leaders of this circuit is to expand this edifice. So today we are here to support them to expand this church. So I beg on all of us to be part of this cause in expanding this church. And I will start with the water. 
before we go out to the streets or to the venue to sell. Inside God's house, as the Reverend Father has prayed, I took note of three things that he said about the water. He said water is light, it is refreshing, and the third one is what? Was away our sins. Thank you. Uh -huh. I thought that we were not listening. But thank God that these are the three things he said when he was blessing this water. So this water has metamorphosis from water to spiritual things. So I just want us to buy this water to support the cause of expanding this church. And I just want to have 12 people to come and take 12 bottles at 300 or up. 300 or up, but 300. It can be up. It can be more, but not down. Not less. So can I have the 12 bottles? Can I have my apostles to come and just take this thing just as to support and to begin the motion of what? So we to see the seed to God Almighty. Twelve bottles. Can you have quick quick time is going? Time is gone. Don't be six the spirit. If the spirit tells you to come, just come. God will support you and God will bless you. Can I have the twelve people to come? The twelve apostles and then another set of twelve. Let us just come. The basket is here. Three hundred of words or more, it is fine. Take, give a bottle, give a bottle, give me a bottle, give me a bottle. Please let them come, let them come and take and support the cause. It is not for any other thing but it's to expand this edifice. And tomorrow we'll be here to celebrate God's goodness. Take, take the twelve. Una man, a win a man, a win a man.
This is the last bottle. And this bottle is a different bottle. This bottle represents all the apostles of Jesus and what they stand for. And this bottle will go for five hundred dollars. supported uh, in this uh, initiative of expanding the house of the Lord. We pray for them. Almighty God, we raise their names. And you know them by name. They are not a crowd, but you know them through and through. You know them even before we know them. You knit them together in their mother's womb. And you call them by name. So Father, I want you to bless them by name. One by one. Replenish them. I pray that the 300 or the 500, wherever they have taken it from, Father, refresh, replenish them. Pay them back. Pay their kindness and their goodness. May they never lack. I pray that whatever stands as a stumbling block in their lives, Lord, you will make it a stepping stone. So they will be able to reach where you want them to be. May their generosity be blessed today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to read a portion of the readings today that will stand as a testament of what you have done for God today and what you will do after here. This service that you have performed is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people but also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. May this be your portion. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, fill me now and evermore. As we discuss with him, number 615.